The spirits of the land leave their faint whisper in the echo of your steps walking down cobbled streets. They watch over you as you admire what their hands have once shaped out of stone and clay and touch your heart in time old song. This video is not about ancestral spirit guides or communication with those that have passed, but strives to help you connect to the souls that have walked the land many moons ago, finding ancient wisdom in culture and traditions and incorporate it into your own witchcraft practice. Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery. In today's witch vlog or day in the life of a witch, I wanna show you a little bit more about ancestral magic. How to channel those ancient energies into your witchcraft practice wherever you are. Do a Moorish inspired abundance and money spell. Potter a super cute altar bowl. Eat some tapas. Visit beautiful secret gardens. And last but not least, create a cottage witch protection spell for hearth and home. Magic is really to be found everywhere. So let's keep our eyes open on this early morning stroll through the city. Let's go! Oh yeah, that behind me is the, the bridge from Game of Thrones. love about living in Europe is that everything is just really, really old history in the cities. You have a lot of cultural influences which obviously also come with a lot of traditions, a lot of beliefs and a bit of folk witchcraft. And while in all the other metropoles of Europe, Boers were still scratching their butts on oak trees, Cordoba was already the world leading cultural center of education, of science. In the 10th century, it was the biggest city in Western Europe, if not in the world. It used to be a Roman settlement, it got taken over by the Visigoths, taken over by the Islamic world and it became the Caliphate of Cordoba. And as you could see before, the architecture really reflects the Roman temples, those old castillos, the churches, the Arabic mosques. Beautiful! And one thing that is super prevalent here in the cities are fountains everywhere because it's the hottest city in Spain. I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. You got dynamite, that smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Can I have it for free? I'm an explosion. But also the hottest city, you know. So having water everywhere is a necessity. Back in the days, it was also obviously a sign of the scientific progress as well as wealth. The city had over 900 bathhouses. It had running water through the aqueducts in a very unwelcoming climate. Inspired by that history, I will now show you an abundance or money spell using the element of water and some other traditional items from the local culture. Now, First of all, I'm going to light a couple of white candles. I do that in order to cleanse the space. And I wanted to have that pure energy because I wanna have my abundance and my blessings from a place of gratitude and positivity and not out of greed. So I'm banishing all these kind of negative emotions. Next, I'm using a Cordobus household staple. It's a potted bowl with some old Arabic inspired design and it usually has the colors green, white and black called Ceramica Califal. Colors have traditionally meaning assigned to them. Black symbolizes austerity, power and dignity. White symbolizes clarity, loyalty and power. And green symbolizes happiness and is the color most related to the Muslim culture. Definitely all great things that will help us achieve that abundance and money flow. If you don't have a bowl like that, don't sweat it. Just use a plain old cereal bowl. It's not the tools, it's the intent that makes the magic. Cinnamon was a very, very expensive 
spice traded in the Arab world. And it's not surprising that its magical properties are also linked to drawing in money, drawing in luck, drawing in abundance. So we're lighting this on fire and we're just like smoking out our bowl real quick. Also, it smells really nice. Now, if you're somewhat a believer of the law of attraction, abundance attracts abundance. And that's why we're using that formerly expensive spice to draw in more of the same. Mindset plays a big, big role in witchcraft. So what I'm doing right now is to write down what I am grateful for, what blessings and what abundance I already have in my life. It really helps you to get in that mindset of being worthy of all the blessings coming your way. Place it underneath the bowl. So gratitude is actually the basis. Then you can place something in a bowl that symbolizes money or abundance for you. What is our most important treasure? We cannot survive without water it's literally life force for us and we're pouring that in our bowl visualizing that with the water there's also wealth abundance money whatever you need flowing into your life being the practical witch that I am, I also take a little moment to really meditate about the things that will bring me that sort of financial gain that I'm looking for and that's it. May many blessings come your way. The Cuderia in Cordoba is this very old district with all these like narrow little streets and it's basically where all the craftsmen, traditional craftsmen are. It's like the leather workshops, the Arabic pottery workshops, the silver smithing and gold workshops because Cordoba is actually the biggest distributor for jewelry in Spain. It produces 60% of all the jewelry here. Especially when it comes to the more superstitious, witchy or religious kind of jewelry. And I find that, oh my God, so many tourists. So many tourists, I bought. Anyway, as I was saying, something that's really cool to do, maybe also in your area is to find out what the typical products of your area are or the typical crafts in your area, because it tells you a lot about the culture, history, um, of the area and also what people back in the days found important, how they supported their living. It can give you some great ideas, especially if you're working with ancestral magic and stuff like that. Maybe take a workshop, get more acquainted with it and see how it was used back in the day or what kind of spiritual meaning it also had. really love to like craft things with my hands and then use them later on in my craft too. So I was wondering, do you do like art witchcraft too? Do you make your own supplies? I just walked into the craftsmanship guild here. The lovely Carmen agreed to give me a little pottery class because pottery is very, very traditional here, like still from the Arab area. Working with clay, that's a very grounding activity. It just promotes mindfulness and you're just like really focused on creating something and forcing, not forcing, but like fueling all your energy in it. So I think that's something really beautiful. You're working with actual like, you know, materials from the earth. I want to get my hands dirty and make a super cool bowl. <laughs> Let's see how that goes, because the last time I did clay work, I was possibly in kindergarten. <laughs> so <laughs> go and do some pottery. It's also really pretty here.
was such a fun activity to do. I mean, I have the talent of a toddler, unfortunately, when it comes to pottery, I just discovered. But like, honestly, it was so relaxing and so grounding, very meditative and can only recommend it for any art, artsy witch out there. But now I'm super hungry, so let's go and eat some tapas. <laughs> In my urban witch video, I spoke about finding places of calm and tranquil and you know, just peace and rest and a little bit of nature in cities and even in a hot city like Cordoba. There are little green oases to be found. In May, there is the Fiesta de los Patios, a competition held since 101 years, deciding who has the prettiest patio or backyard. The city houses of the old quarters have those little outside spaces enclosed in their house, where there's usually a body of water, like a fountain, plants hanging from the walls, traditional artwork there, and it just makes it very magical. And it's this lovely mix of the Mozarabic culture and style and influence. But it's very nice if you know someone and has one to just sit there, have a little vino, have a little beer or a little tea, enjoy some time with your friends or with your family. Be away from the hustle and bustle of the city but just basically separated by a wall. this I thought it is time for a little bit of B. I wish there was no dog here. Let's try it again. So inspired by all this I thought we could do a little bit of cottage witchery and I wanted to take the essence of that Moorish tradition of protective magic coupled with the lovely traditions of the patios and obviously also what the patios represent like this place to come together as a family in harmony and love. I came up with a little spell concoction, a magical potpourri that serves as a protection spell as well as a little magical something to draw in that love and bliss and harmony for your house and for your home too. I do not promote what I will show you next. Obviously it's not necessarily legal to go around your neighborhood and just um, take here and there a blossom that hangs over the fence, but uh, well, you, you have to discuss that with your own conscience. Flower shops are in a city a lot of times the better alternative if you don't grow flowers in your own balcony or garden. But I'm a rebel today and that's also why I get barked at by a guard dog. So now first we have to steal, I mean buy some flowers that we enjoy. And here you could go for fragrant options like roses, popular choice when you want to add some love to your home protection spell, flowers that match in magical correspondences for what you want to achieve here like baby's breath, lilac, marigold, jasmine and many more. I just took everything that looked pretty and it didn't have too big of an evil guard demon at the gate because unfortunately I know check shit about the southern Spanish flora or its magical correspondences. But it looks great and makes me happy so I'm sure it will draw in positivity too. I also added oranges as they add a very uplifting positive scent and it makes you happy. But they take about 5,000 years to dry so do them first if adding citrus fruit. If you too have a million and hell degrees where you live you can just air dry them in the sun soaking up that solar energy in about three days. For everyone else pop them in the oven at a low temperature for about two to three hours. 
Same goes for drying the flowers, but if you air dry them, they keep their colors, más o menos. Now for the flowers. We want to pick the petals off of them, and when choosing them, you can also think of color correspondences that you could incorporate, or memories and links that you have with specific flowers. Now I added some pink Himalayan salt, because I love to use salt for protection, but Pink I mix in my spells when I want it to be a bit of a softer magic that requires a little bit of TLC, like self-love, harmony and such. And we don't want to forget our protective and strong scented herbs. Rosemary is my number one choice for protection, but depending what you want to draw into your home with this spell, feel free to add lavender, lemon balm, chamomile, basil, etc, etc. A flower potpourri itself has a very subtle scent depending on the stuff you use, so you can make a little mist to spritz it with. So it doesn't only do its magic, but it also makes your home smell like magic. For prolonged shell life, you need distilled water in a sterile container. Skip that step if you are a lazy witch and just use essential oils. Mix it with matching oil. I use rose for that harmony and family love, but there are also many other fragrances to consider, like orange blossom, frankincense, vanilla, and so on. Mix it, shake it, shake it, shake it, mama sita. Now fill it in a vaporizer. Don't know why I didn't use that in the first place. My mind is a mysterious maze of uh, many marvels. Arrange the dry shit in a bowl, spray it with magic, and place it in the center of your home for protection, love, harmony, and family bliss. Magic done. La, 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 la. Now my lovely witches, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this witch vlog and that it gave you some ideas and inspiration on how to connect with the spirit of the lands through culture and customs and traditions and how you can weave that sort of ancestral magic into your own witchcraft practice. I'm gonna see you very soon either with a video of a full moon ritual or maybe a video on a sea witchcraft because it's said to be a 40 seven to 50 degrees here soon and I'm just not built for the heat. You know what, you just let me know what you would prefer to see. Okay, bye!